You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for your support of The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. We're continuing our series on hobbies. This has been such a fun break. So from, much fun. <laughs> uh, normal life, maybe. I don't know. Uh, getting some really good ideas for things to keep our hands busy, to fill our time when things are just kind of all out of whack because of coronavirus. But this is such a, a healthy way to uh, explore all of the talents and and different ways of being productive and crafty in a good way. Uh, Today we get to talk about painting, which is really exciting. Uh, So many different ways to paint and to use this talent and skill. So joining us today is Samantha Bender, who is a mama and an artist. And uh, we go way back to Concordia, Chicago. So I'm super excited to have you on today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So when did your interest in painting begin? Um, Well, I don't exactly remember because I think it's probably always been there. Um, My sisters and I, we always got to do messy crafts with my grandma and my parents weren't, they weren't uh, strict on anything either. So, I mean, we had glitter, we had everything. (laughs) It was was a lot of fun. And then art class was always one of my favorite classes. So I think always. What is it that you love about painting? Why do you love it? So I love, (laughs) I love all kinds of arts and crafts, but I never get bored with painting because it's not something I feel like I've ever fully mastered. I think that there's always room for growth and styles can change and it's, it's something that that is relaxing too. And I think a lot of people will say who are artists say like, oh, do it for the process. And, And I do sometimes, but I really like seeing an end result, especially when it works out. (laughs) And (laughs) I'm a bit of a perfectionist too. So I think that's probably why I lean more toward that end of the painting goal. (laughs) Um, And like hindsight, I went to school for education, but I think that I would have loved to have maybe a specialty in art or something that would have maybe saved me a lot of time on learning things (laughs) on my own instead of, um, yeah, or instead of learning on my own, (laughs) I should say. (laughs) Speaking of of learning on your own, how do you approach that then? How do you approach learning something new in painting? Well, if it's art related, I am all in. I get a little obsessed. (laughs) You could ask my husband, John. I have (laughs) cabinets full of art supplies, just anything, like you name it, I probably have it except for a kiln because... (laughs) There's not room for that, but I really you can't want put one. that in the cabinet. <laughs> nope, <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> no. I think uh, the internet has really enabled my <laughs> my love for all things too, because you can just find videos of practically anything that you could even think of, or things that you didn't even know existed. You know, like I just fall down the rabbit hole of YouTube and find things, and um, just want to try them immediately. And sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. I mean, I also got to be budget conscious, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, um, I think, uh, too, like I listened to your episode when you interviewed Erin Alter about her sewing Mm -hmm. hobby. And I loved that. And I, I'm with her too. It's just starting with kind of like the the harder techniques, you know, just (laughs) jumping all in and I find that fun. So when we talk about painting, some people might think of like maybe oil painting or watercolors, but what there's a lot of different types of painting. Uh, can, can you kind of run through the, the different styles and maybe if you have a favorite? Um, yes. When I think about painting, um, like four different things come to my mind usually. I mean, oils, uh, acrylic, gouache, and watercolor. And I don't really know enough to talk about oil paints. I've only dabbled in that very briefly and I I got a little snafu so I can't uh I can't even say what I used because I'm like I don't think this is working so so well <laughs> I thought it was and then it wasn't um but um I really like um acrylics and that would that would probably be my go-to for um for like if I had a favorite maybe but I can't always get out my acrylic painting supplies because it's a lot to get out and it's a lot to clean up and I don't have a special room at our, in our home to have art supplies out all the time. So with all four kids running around and just 
daily life activities that's not the most practical for me. Um, so I would say like I my go to for now is watercolor or gouache because they're really portable and they're so much faster to clean up and the um those those would be probably the things that I use most often and probably know the most about right now. Are there are there different um types of supplies or equipment that you need for these different types of painting? And also, what is gouache? I know what gouache is. Andy <laughs> needs to know what gouache is. <laughs> and everyone else listening who is in the same boat as me, who's not a painter. How do you even spell that? <laughs> uh, it is G-O-U-C-H-E, I believe. And it rhymes with squash. And <laughs> I didn't know about gouache until I was taking a class at Concordia, actually. I just, I just took an art fundamentals class because I thought it would be fun. And um, they had you buy some, some gouache paints and I love them. I still have them. I have no idea where they got them because gouache is expensive and I don't mm -hmm. remember paying very much for that. And I have these huge containers of it still. Um, but it's, it's kind of a mix between acrylic and watercolor in that it, you can paint it on and, and it can be opaque um, or you can water it down and it works like watercolor in a lot of ways. It doesn't spread exactly the same way, but I love to use my gouache paints like watercolors because I have a set that I've bought recently um, that has a ton of different colors. So if I'm in a hurry and I don't feel like I want to mix up a whole bunch of my own colors, um, I'll just I'll just use that set there and I can use it like watercolors and it's great. Mm. Well, now I feel enlightened. I learned something new in every <laughs> one of these stories of hobbies because I didn't know what gouache was and I certainly would have mispronounced that as well. <laughs> And I read it. Um, so yeah. <laughs> has anyone been particularly influential in your painting or improving your skills in painting? Uh, yes. I would say that um, my freshman high school art teacher was, she was just a really wonderful lady and very calm, very supportive. And she had us do all of the all the basic fundamental skills that you learn like oh you know mixing colors and drawing skills all, all of those things um, but she also was really big on exposing you to a lot of different art supplies and really nice art supplies too um, just things that I would have I wouldn't have known they even existed especially in high school when I, I mean I didn't I don't know if I knew what YouTube was in high school. Was that even around? I don't know. I, I don't remember. <laughs> it wasn't when I was in high school, but that was before we had the internet. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the internet was definitely around when I was in high school. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think I was looking for painting videos back then. <laughs> and then I guess um, now, I mean, really, I, I keep saying it, but like YouTube, it, uh, it's a really great place to learn. And I follow a lot of different artists on Instagram too, um, who they, they post things all the time. They'll post tutorials, like videos of things that they are making and like the different supplies that they like to use, which is super helpful and really neat. And, and of course too, like looking back at um, like classic painters and I'm totally going to butcher his name, but I think it's French. And I tried to look up the pronunciation, but it's like William Bouguereau or something. I, I think it's similar to that. And his paintings are so beautiful and realistic and soft that I wish I could paint like that. And maybe someday I'll have time to try that. <laughs> we'll give you points just for knowing how to say gouache. I mean, that's, okay. that's <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> It is it is really neat to see how teachers impact us so much, uh, particularly art teachers. I was blessed to have in elementary school to have actually a college art professor as our art teacher. And we were doing things wow. in like third grade. We were using oil pastels in like third and fourth grade. So um, to, I, can, I can relate to what you're saying about mm -hmm. having a, an art teacher that teaches you about the importance of just using... Um, quality supplies and, and and teaching you about a variety of different art supplies so that you can enjoy something different each day, really. So what are some insights that you might share with someone who is new to painting? I think the first thing would be um, try not to be intimidated or really discouraged by what other people are doing, because I think it can be hard when you're starting something new to see all of these 
like in painting, these really beautiful compositions and paintings and think, wow, like, I don't think I could ever do that. Like, what am I doing starting this new hobby? But it, you can always improve and you can always get better and just like study that work, analyze it, see what you like, what you don't like, but, and be careful of copyright infringement when you're making your own work <laughs> because <laughs> that's a dangerous road. <laughs> um, and I think probably the best advice for someone who wants to start painting would be to have a really solid drawing foundation because that will help you more than anything, especially if you're trying to paint something and you want it to actually look like something. <laughs> if, you, if you're going abstract, like by all means, like jump right in, do whatever you want to do, use those colors. Um, but when you're um, trying to make something more realistic, which is usually my favorite thing to do, like I love to paint people and and flowers, but I, I get a little caught up in all the details and having a drawing first to start with is is really beneficial. And one way to practice that is to, if you if you look up like grid drawing skills, um, they're even in <laughs> they're even in coloring books. Like my kids mm -hmm. get coloring books for people, and they'll flip to these. I'm like, how do I draw this? And I'm like, oh, I know how to do this. Like it's way too hard for you right now, but <laughs> this is what you do. <laughs> you just you just break it all down into squares, and you just copy each little square, and then when you put it all together, you've got this beautiful drawing that's in proportion. And it's I still use it when I um, do pieces that I want to make sure are drawn well. Um, and then uh, another um, tip that I think is important too with painting is you don't have to have the best color mixing skills necessarily. I mean, that's definitely a huge um, component, but if you get your values right, which is the darkness or lightness of your paint colors in your painting, that will make all the difference in the world. That is what you're drawn to when you look at a painting, um, in my opinion, because if you take um, a painting that um, and you just put it in a computer program or something or your phone and you just switch it to black and white mode, if you see that it has um, a really big value difference, like with really bright whites and really dark darks, that pa painting, when you switch it back to your color mode, is going to look so much better than if you don't have that. I don't know if that's explaining it really well, but <laughs> that's probably like the biggest component. Like I see when I, when people are starting out and they, and I, and I still struggle with it too. Um, I try to make mine darker because I tend to go a, a lighter route with all of my things. I just want everything really soft and I have to go back and I'm like, Oh, I need more value. I need more value. I have to make this dark in this spot. <laughs> so that, those would be probably my tips for beginners. You know, I'm thinking about all the, the, the paintings and what makes uh, art vibrant. The, the contrast in there uh, does mm -hmm. yes, make that, a huge, a <laughs> yes, huge that's difference. that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> And it's and it's it, I, when you're talking about uh, a foundation in drawing. I know when I was uh, trying to to stay with a, an art hobby a few years ago, uh, just having like a simple sketchbook, and when you have ten or fifteen minutes, just look at something and and sketching it out, just to like train your brain to see things in a different way, to go from that three D object that you're looking at to the the two D painting of, of what you're trying to do. That can be so helpful to just train your eye and your brain to to start seeing things and more artistic way uh we have to take a break uh we are talking with sam bender about art we will be right back you're listening to the coffee hour i'm sarah golseth i'm andy bates You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Eddie Bates. 
We're doing our series on hobbies, and we're talking about painting today with artist Samantha Bender. And uh, but before we went to break, we were talking about uh, some tips for newbies, some things that uh, people who are interested in painting but haven't quite dabbled in it yet could try uh, in order to, to start painting. Um, one thing that happens when you're new to something, though, and maybe if, if you're experienced as well, is you make a lot of mistakes. Uh, do you have... Uh, do you have a, a most memorable uh, oopsie with your artwork or painting? I know you mentioned the oil painting earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, well, I actually have two. Um, <laughs> one was leaving an oil paint pen out <laughs> when my son was, uh, I don't know, uh, one or two. <laughs> and uh, he got into it. And <laughs> It was it was not pretty, and it was all over his pajamas. It was on our table, our chair, our carpet. The oh, no. one room we have carpet in our entire house. You know, of course, not on there yet, but um, <laughs> but John wound up getting it out, so that was that was a relief. Um, and then the other thing was actually not researching um, some new paints that I wanted to buy well enough, and I mm. I purchased I, oh, I purchased these these really expensive liquid watercolor paints and they are beautiful and I love them, but I learned later that they are not light fast, which is, oh. um, light fast is how well the paint holds up over time to light exposure. And <laughs> these aren't light fast. So if you put them in the sun, they're going to fade really quickly. So I like to use them for fun, but they aren't good if I want to give those paintings away to anyone or frame them and put them in my own house. So mm -hmm. that was, uh, that was definitely a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned earlier that you don't have a specific dedicated space or, or, or room just for painting. Do you have a favorite place that you do like to paint? <laughs> um, no. Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> like wherever I can paint without being interrupted. Uh, um, it, uh, I have an explosion of things all over the house all the time, and it's <laughs> it's it's no longer a point of contention. It's just kind of how life is. <laughs> so we have a couple tables in the house, and I have a a little desk that we put in our room, but I refuse to use it because there's no light, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so just kind of everywhere. <laughs> So how have you, you mentioned earlier the, you know, the, the big faux pas of leaving the, the, some of the supplies out and your son getting into them. How do you learn from the, the mistakes, whether it's like leaving materials out or, or learning from, uh, you, you talked about earlier, the, the light, um, not being, what was the word? Light. Light fast. Light, light fast. fast. Mm -hmm. Um, to be honest, uh, not with a lot of grace. <laughs> and, <laughs> again, I, I'm a perfectionist, and so it, that those two things don't go together very well. <laughs> um, and uh, sometimes I need to try something again right away just because I, I need it to be right. And sometimes I need to set something aside, and maybe I will revisit it like a year down the road and sometimes I just will leave it be and that's just where it is <laughs> and and it's okay because I always have a lot of different projects going on at once I can't I can't just stick to one um my brain goes a million miles an hour and I have so many ideas and things that I want to do that I'll I'll start something and then I'll start something else and bounce around now you mentioned that you like to do realistic things what are some of your favorite things uh, to paint or things that you have painted before? I love to paint people. Um, portrait painting is probably my favorite if if I had to choose. And um, right now I have uh, two of my children uh, painted in watercolor. Just It's just simple like black and white paintings. And I am hoping to finish the other two by the end of this year because especially one of my one of our twins she's like when are you going to paint me why did you why did you paint mary why didn't you paint me i'm like oh i'm so sorry honey i just i will paint you don't worry um but i just i like the expressions um and their faces and i like the challenge of especially getting their eyes right that's that's really important if you don't have someone's eyes right it just doesn't look like them um mm -hmm. so that's my favorite. And it is a lot harder than you would think to paint somebody's <laughs> face and to get all of those proportions 
right and like the eyes and the shape of the nose and all of those things that that you don't totally notice when you just like take a picture of someone it's like oh yeah it's their face and then you try to draw them and there are so many details and curves and shapes and shadows and there's there's a lot that goes into that yes there definitely is so that us and so you paint your kids. Your kids like to get into your supplies. Are there any <laughs> ways that you uh, that you involve your children uh, in a in a productive way <laughs> to, uh, to to kind of get them involved into this hobby? Yes, I, I they've all got little watercolor sets that we'll take out from time to time and line them up at the kitchen counter. They each have their own stool, and they'll get out <laughs> the paper and their their paint smocks or T-shirts, whatever is around, and and they'll paint for. I don't know, a good hour, hour and a half. I, they, they really enjoy it. And that's fun. And I can't do anything during that time because it's just constantly cleaning stuff up or getting the new <laughs> papers, but it's, it's a good learning experience for them. And, and it's fun. So have you seen any um, skill in them that you want to continue to encourage or to, uh, to cultivate? Yes. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's hard, um, especially for my oldest daughter. She, I think, I, I think they all, like they all have their own special gifts and talents, but I think she especially gets discouraged now that she's older because she sees what I do mm. and is also a perfectionist and wants to already <laughs> be at that level. And so just trying to be encouraging without, um, picking anything apart or anything. I just really want them to enjoy making art and having that as an outlet or something fun for them to do. Um, so I'm still learning with that. I don't quite know the best way to go about that because I don't, I definitely don't want to discourage them from doing anything like that because I, I love it so much and it's important in my life. How has painting uh, helped or provided a way for you to serve your neighbor? That's a, that's a great question. It's a deep question, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's not on your question prompts. <laughs> um, well, I think uh, my natural love language uh, is gift giving. And so being able to make something that I think is special or meaningful for people in my life that I care about is a, a way that I like to do that. Um, I have some people who... I have uh, done portraits of their children before and given them to them. Um, that's, that's probably my favorite gift that I've ever done. And it was funny when my husband was working for another company a long time ago, they had a secret Santa gift exchange and gosh, this is probably t nine years ago. <laughs> and <laughs> um, they weren't allowed to spend more than $2 on these gifts. So everyone was getting all these funny things like a snail and a paper clip. And he, he busts out this colored pencil portrait that I did of uh, the person he's got. He, he got um, one of his friends and uh, she had one son at the time and he gave her this portrait and everyone's like, what? This is so not fair. <laughs> but that, that was very fun. <laughs> You've mentioned a few things. Do you have uh, favorite uh, tools that you use for painting? Favorite favorite paints or paper, especially? I'm, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of the of the really nice paper. Any of those those favorite things that that uh, your your go to supplies? Yes, and I, if it's all right, I'd like to be really specific, just because when I'm looking up things that I want to try. I want to know, what did you use? What exactly do you like to use? I don't want to waste time and money looking for things that I, I don't know if they're going to work or not. So this is like, this is just what has worked for me. And I haven't tried everything out there. So I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say it's like the best of the best or anything like that. But when I'm working with watercolors, for instance, um, I, I don't want to go cheap on paper ever anymore because mm -hmm. I found that of all the supplies to, um, to be more specific with, like I use, um, 140 pound, um, cold press watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. I use arches, but I've heard that legions is really comparable to, I haven't tried that. Um, if I'm just playing around, I like to buy the Strathmore or the Canson. Um, you won't get the same results, but it's definitely a good thing to start out with if you don't want to spend a lot of money on, on that. Um, and I, I actually, like I like to go, um, to, to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or even Amazon and 
by by my brushes and I <laughs> I don't like the professional ones, to be honest. I like the <laughs> student grade, <laughs> and I don't know if it's from using them for so long, um, but I, I I splurged and I bought some really nice watercolor brushes, and I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say you're probably fine if you have some cheap brushes, um, maybe not super cheap, because then the hairs fall out in your paintings, mm-hmm. especially if you're getting acrylic paint brushes. I wouldn't go the super, super cheap, um, because then they're stuck in your paintings and you can't get them (laughs) out and it ruins the texture. Um, And then for paints, um, really, (laughs) I started out using the praying watercolor sets like you buy for school and they have really beautiful, vibrant colors. Don't ask me if they're light fast. I don't know that. Um, But but Winsor Newton, Daniel Smith, um, P.H. Martin, I'm sorry, Dr. P.H. Martin, liquid watercolors, um, those that specific brand has ones that are light fast and ones that aren't. So you have to look up which ones if you are, if you think that's important to you. Um, as far as acrylic paints go, um, I use just like the, the generic, like Michael's brand. I like those a lot. They're like student level ones. I also have some professional golden brand ones and they, they work really well too. Um, uh, those, like those, um, I would say it's kind of hard too sometimes to mix things when you're painting. I, I just watched this really cool video. Even just this week, I learned something new about acrylic painting. Um, a lady was like, you don't need to buy a million different shades of paint. Like if your color theory and your mixing is is really nice. If you buy ones that are um, single, single pigment paints, and they'll tell you right on the front of your tubes if you're buying tube paint, if they're um, single pigment or multiple pigment mixtures and um if you get the single pigment ones then they mix really well with each other and you can make a lot of really vibrant colors with those so that was really cool learning about that um and then for gouache i don't i don't think i have a favorite gouache brand so i can't really help you with that oh and then oils i don't know enough about it so (laughs) i'm sorry (laughs) oh that's all right oh we so much, so much good information and, and good insight and tips and, and all of this for uh, anyone who is interested in painting or just loves to paint already and wants to like nerd out with you. That's totally yeah. cool. Uh, we are all out of time. Thank you so much, Samantha, for joining us on the Coffee Hour to talk about your hobby of painting. Oh, thank you for having me. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. <laughs> The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.